Swami Vishnu Devananda asks, what is the most mysterious question? And he answers. One more day. One more day? One more day. Twenty-four hours. To reach the new year and remove the old year. Madhavasa, you came to enjoy your new year? Eh? You came to enjoy the new year, is it not? Rejoice the new year. Did you bring in champagne? Okay, then rejoice without champagne in New Year. How our mind forces. Some of part some part of the world of this globe, New Year is already gone. Is it not where? In Australia, I think. Australia's New Year is over. Europe. Huh? Pardon? Europe. Europe. No, Europe is not Europe. In India, it is a thirty-first around. Uh, 9 o'clock or so, 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. now, our Trivandrum Ashram, they are also celebrating New Year. So also in Namara, there is a special havan, Chandi Hama is going on, now at this time. And uh, when they are going to have their midday meal, we are all going to sleep. sleep. Thank you. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to sleep. So you can also sleep. But we forget again. While sleeping, what is happening? Lakshmi, what is happening while sleeping? Just forget. Pardon? Forget happening. While Madarasa, what is happening while sleeping? Dreaming, Swami. Not when you don't dream, what you do? The is getting older. Thank you, Mother. See, Mother Harutha, Gopakshi is getting wiser than I thought you are the wisest person now, you see? See how she is taking all your knowledge. It's only, only with her teaching. <laughs> so the teacher you give all the knowledge and then you become stupid and the student become great, isn't it? Even while you are sleeping, Time sweeps away kings and barons. That time never stops. Time never stops. Even if you could stop that time just for a moment, how wonderful it will be. Is it not? How can you stop the time even for a moment? Can you do that? Anyway, show me anyone knows how to stop the time, even for a moment. I'll give you quite a lot of money if you can stop the time. Not but just turning the watch. Watch out. That's not for that problem. Real stopping the time. How do you do that? If you want to stop the time, 
stop identifying with this perishable body and mind and this universe. The moment you touch yourself or God or Atman, time no more exists. That's all. That's the only time you transcend time, transcend space. Both time and space are creation of your mind. Mind create this illusion. That's the time. But what is happening is constantly changes take place. You cannot stop the changes, the process of change. Whether you sleep, whether you dream, whether you walk on the moon, whether you go underground, underwater, changes take place. Everything what you see, what you hear, what you taste, what you smell, what you understand, what you intellectually realize it, it changes. Motion. The Germany, that lamb, is continuously changing. It's not the same. Each moment, that oil is getting smaller, the beak is getting smaller, and the oil is changing into smoke, into carbon dioxide, and the heat, and the light. But the object is not completely destroyed nowhere. Never you can destroy anything, but also you can never keep that object in the same state. No way. Even if the lamp is not burning, still there is slow, slow burning take place without our knowledge. The oil is slowly evaporating. The wick is getting slowly oxidized. Well, it may take ten thousand years, you may feel like a ash. But whether it's slow motion, or fast motion, it is, it is changing, whether you see it or not. As you are looking at me, I am also, my nose is changing. <laughs> Have you seen? Please look very carefully. My nose is changing. <laughs> Have you seen? Can you see my nose is changing? Madhavasa, can you see me? My nose is changing. You bring a microscope. <laughs> that flower, beautiful, it is also changing. What is going to change in ten days? I can do it in very fast. <laughs> in ten seconds, is it the power of Swami Vishnu? I speed up the time. <laughs> I can speed up the time and I can slow the time if I want it. Means we are not neither accelerating the time or this, bringing the time in a very slow motion. What exactly happening is mind thinks, oh yes, it's changing faster. That idea is that's all. But how do you know it's moving faster or slower or changing take place faster or slower? Just by comparison. You can see that same thing is still there. The one which I just plucked from this small portion is changed. So compared to that, this is changing very fast. And there are other flowers made up of different chemicals, different materials. They decay still much slower than that. <coughs> but whether it's slow or fast is only comparison. Because there's nothing to compare. How do you know it is changing, slow or fast? So there's only one flower pot in the whole world. That only. How do you know it's changing? Fast or slow? How do you know? No way to compare. So my nose is changing slow or fast compared to Madarasa's nose. <laughs> Pardon? My definitely, I'm a little older, so I'm getting faster wrinkles and fast changing noses, faster gray hairs and more faster things. She will take another 
20, 30 years to get all this very fat, but she is always changing at the very moment. Though Gopal is looking at Madhavasa constantly, but she does, he doesn't see that his wife is, wife is changing. <laughs> If he feels that she is changing, he gives, gives her, go to a beauty parlor and just uh, get a hairdo. <laughs> Came back with a new hairdo, with a $50 hairdo. What do you call it? Uh, uh, permanent, permanent. $50 permanent. <laughs> Honey, you look wonderful. <laughs> you, when he says he looks wonderful, though he spent, she spent $50 for a permanent, but still it is changing. He is not seeing it because he is not wearing the right glass. <laughs> so if he changes the glass, a very big magnifying glass, then suddenly she looked at, his, at her face. <laughs> All the wrinkles appear to be like a, like a big river. <laughs> All small tiny spots appear to be like mountain <laughs> and valley. <laughs> mountain and valley, mountain and valley. The hair, my God, it contains millions and millions and millions of bacteria and garlic. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> she must definitely go for another <laughs> care premium. <laughs> and uh, suddenly, the beautiful lips, there comes bacteria, many bacteria, as big as mosquitoes crawling, <laughs> or worms crawling. <laughs> That's a lip, my youth. It's wonderful about the beautiful lip. Look at that. He's going to divorce pretty soon. Yeah? He's going to divorce pretty soon. <laughs> no. If he sees the Atman and she sees the Atman, there is no divorce. Divorce is caused by thinking that uh, this object is going to be always same, beautiful. But it is not. Once a person understands that things are going to change, okay, now what can I do about it? <laughs> so he accepts it. Only those people who cannot understand this, they get shocked. Like uh, Marilyn Monroe, she thought she's losing her beauty, and then she took, my God, I can't. But I'm sure Madarasa is not going to take any. Don't worry about it. Narma. Um, Gopal Krishna, if it's the right mind and understood my right teaching and realize that right teaching, Aham Brahma's name, she will never go for another woman. It's not necessary, he's quite happy. <laughs> if not, as she sees all the rhythm etc., he has to find another girl, another boy. That's the cause of it. Anyhow, so the very lips you consider beautiful, the germs and worms and bacteria are crawling there. Do you know that? Have you seen that? any bacteria there? They put a big magnifying glass And all that order coming out of this thing, if you can collect all that sweat and make it into, condense it, the smell will be like an Channel 5 and Channel 6. <laughs> <laughs> they make out of it a nice French perfume. <coughs> That's why all French perfumes are made up of animal sweat and so forth. You see. So they can make your sweat also. They can just take it and condense it and digest it uh, and mix it with little alcohol. Mm. Real Indian perfume coming from the Himalaya. If you don't like it, the flies will come. If you don't believe it, that same horrible thing for you, the flies will say, ah, what a wonderful thing. I remember all of them. 
Grass Valley Farm or other ashram in California, there is to be a septic pool, septic, open septic pool. There was a very difficult to drain out. There was no septic tank in those days. But now we pump up the thing to mountain top. It gets all low gra ground level, so there's no way you can just drain out. So they put an open pool. There was only one or two people who survived. Right. But that septic pool became really, merely unbelievable. But that's not so bad. It became the breeding house for the flies. I never seen so many flies in my life. The platform where you do asana, flies just carpeted with the, with the, with the fly. And whether you just breathe, you turn flies, you kill by just you are breathing alone. And if you do pranayama, <laughs> millions of flies you die on And you open your mouth, thousands of flies going <laughs> And you eat anything, there will be flies going inside, flies going outside. So, we asked some people how to get rid of these flies. They said, buy a trap, fly trap. I know what a fly trap. How, is, how do you do that? You just go, you can get it. A jar, a glass jar with a lid on the top with a black lid. And uh, there's a, the top lid. There's a hole, big hole, and the flies can go inside. So then they can come out also that way. Oh, they won't come out. Why? Because this black top, the light cannot come through the top, so the glass sees the the light comes through the glass, so they will be trying to go through the glass. Oh, that's a good idea. So it cannot just go up because there's no light coming from the top. So they think there's a way you deserve the, all the flies to go. That's good. But how are you going to turn all the flies that the place that to go and stay inside? How are you going to get them? Oh, don't worry. You can buy a, from the chemical shop kind of stinky or stinky. I forgot the name. Well, stinky or stinky, same thing. It stinks. Huh? It stinks. <laughs> so they brought a bottle neatly in the stink, 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 stink. <laughs> as soon as the, the top opened, <laughs> it really stinks. <laughs> they said, just put a little bit into the glass inside and close the top. And that will make all the flies to come in. You don't believe it. Within few seconds of the thing starts smelling, flies all around start coming and the, the jar is filled with the flies. They've had several of the like that. Well, that's not going to with the millions of flies there anyhow. And I asked, what is this made sting, sting made up of? It's sting, sting, uh, sting. They said, oh, it is the dead animals, all the things, they take it up and they brought it up and put it into that and they make it do a, a nice broth out of it. <laughs> oh my God, that flies love that broth. <laughs> the best first person they ever saw good and smells their life. So what you call stinky, or stinks you, the flies are happy, ah, oh, so wonderful. Who is right? Who is right? <laughs> their same sense, just like you have a smell, they got super smells, and they are attracted towards that, so, so you are attracted to the smell of the human body. Well, if you are not merely attracted by human body, they just put you add some kind of stings. That are, they take an Egyptian cat and they take the dung out of it and then extract something more from that and then put it in a bottle for perfume. And you put that, you are attracted. 
or take all most of the animals, especially when they are in the heat, they take it out and then make perfumes out of it. And when the men smell, just like the fly, they are attracted towards the woman. That's the purpose of woman putting those stings. <laughs> You call it perfume, but it is just stings, and the other man is attracted towards the sting. That's all it is. That's what animals do, is it not? If they want to attract somebody. Animals in the heat, they have hormones and sweat is that smell coming out of that. They are attracted. Oh yes, it's animated in heat. It's Vedic. So we are not better than. The only thing is we call it perfume and they call it stings. For the flies, stings are very wonderful. But you perfume also. So also you give the same perfume to a, a fly. I smell the fifty dollar <laughs> perfume. <laughs> it will fly up and away from it. <laughs> you give bring that perfume and you see any flies will come near that perfume, you just look into that. <laughs> So, the same body which creates the order changes its order. As a baby, you've got smell and an aura and an energy which you like to hug. Even lion cub or a tiger cub, ferocious cub, any animal. See, the baby, the moment you see it, you like to stroke, except the skunk. <laughs> But there are people who keep skunk calls as pet. Do you know that? Yeah, they take the, just the gland out and that's They throw some beautiful French perfume. <laughs> then just the gland they remove out and then they bring the pets out. Of the it's wonderful. So our life is nothing but changes. That beautiful face, like flower blooming, suddenly become wrinkles, cat hat. No, you don't want to look at it. Or just merely the word, oh, that man, that beautiful girl has got A. Now you run away from the same body. But you can, have you, anyone has seen real A? Which creates the virus? Anyone has seen? Show me the hand. How many people have seen? Nobody has seen. And still, how do you believe? How do you know it's? Oh, they say they look through various microscope and chemicals, etc. And they come to oh, positive, positive. The moment you hear the positive means you become negative. <laughs> and you become negative, and uh, the other person becomes positive. So positive, negative, up, down, smell, good smell, bad smell, it's all created by your mind. And the same bad smell can be very, very pleasant for some people, do you know that? Once, when the first time I was coming to the West, to Australia, I was, and uh, one day one of the students told me, would you like to come to country and stay in, my country, in our country house? Sure, I love the country. Beautiful Australian forest. And uh, you can see polar bear and kangaroos, etc. And they went into their country house in the uh, backyard, lots of eucalyptus, which is their main diet for the polar bear, polar bear. And the, lots of the polar there in the back. And they've got a beautiful house and went inside the, the dinner time, so a few friends and the nice table, very clean. They, as soon as they entered in the dining area, I started smelling like a dead rat. <laughs> People just know about that a dead rat in their house. Because it's wild forest, you know. So there can be some wild rats can just come and die in the basement or somewhere. You see. But they didn't feel it. That's what I was wondering. How come they did not know there's a dead rat because it's a forest, you know? Even here at you know, midsummer, you can see the rats running around. Not just a bad rat, there are there are good rats, vegetarian. 
Se ele vai. Aí por isso que eu não tenho todos os clipes, não sei. Aí vai por isso. Vamos refazer isso. Oh my god, eu quero ver. Ele está em minha casa. 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 Ele está em I just came to the table now, where one sit a beautiful table, nice tablecloth and candlelight and rose flowers and everything, you know. Oh, for vegetarian, look at beautiful man, vegetarian too. That's smell started increasing. <laughs> now what shall I do? What in how I can't get can can run away. But I was just looking under the table <laughs> Because the spell is so intense, so you can't look under the table. But under a beautiful carpet, there's nothing. That's just scratching the head. <laughs> then smells start coming from the top of the table. And beautiful flowers. Maybe, maybe under some other plates or some other subject. <laughs> Without their knowledge, I was just looking. It is on the table. <laughs> My God, they brought a dead rat here. But there is no rat. But the smell is coming more. It's from a cheese. <laughs> It smelled just like a dead rat. <laughs> some people like that, you know, some people, there's a cheese I saw, I don't know, I, I see a picture, actually I had seen, the, the worms crawling in the cheese, do you know that? And oh my God, they had, we thought the world crawling, worms, real worms, you know, they won't enjoy that. Not just smelly, but worms are there also. You see, what more you want? More protein. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so the one person, the smell is very nice. Other person dies with the same smell. Everything. So who is right? Yeah. There's a joke in India. You know, <coughs> Brahmins don't eat meat and fish. But Muslims, they love fish and meat. So there's a market, vegetable, vegetable market, then you have to pass through the fish, fish market and the slaughter market, etc. So it's a market, you know. So anyhow, you have to, even if you go for vegetable, you have to go through the, when you want to get out, you have to get through the fish market. And smell and horrible there. For especially for vegetarians, that is like a help to go through that. <laughs> and uh, a Brahmin bought some vegetables. He's taking the vegetables, running fast to get out of the place to that area. So he, the smell was so intense, so he goes away. No, it's possible to walk that way. <laughs> Followed by a Muslim. He loves fish. And as soon as he came, he also put the nose. The Brahmin was very much astonished. My God, you are a Muslim, you love that fish, you are carrying something, why are you closing your nose? Why did you close? The smell is horrible, the Brahmin said. I close it because the smell is so good, I don't want to get smell come out of it again. <laughs> I close so I can enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Both did the same act, but one wants to hold that smell, other ones to get, don't want the smell to go in, you know. <laughs> so, the purpose of my talk is, do not be fooled by what you see, what you smell, what your senses are predicting, thinking there is something unique there waiting. There is nothing except the Dati is waiting for you. There's only thing waiting. Come on, come on, come on, I am waiting for you. What do you mean Dat? Change. There's no Dat. You know that? There's no Dat because matter cannot be 
Matter cannot be destroyed. So how can you destroy this body? Body is made up of matter, but it will, it will change, and it is changing, and you cannot stop this process. So that tomato became my body. More tomatoes, my body started growing like tomato, and then when that DK reaches a state where no more tomato can go on, grow this body, then the body changes into another state. You call it death. But it is birth for the, for the tomatoes. And you put a tomato flower, oh, come on, you ate me once upon a time, Ambar, I made sambar out of you. <laughs> now more tomatoes will come out of it. Uh, should I eat some sambar? Yeah. Ambar, I made some sambar. Uh, but not tomato sambar. Is it tomato? Yeah. And so when they buried me that the same tomato I made it today as my body ah, is going with nice, nice, beautiful sambar for him. So one change becomes the birth of something else. Because you cannot create new matter. It's not possible. The same matter has to change. So matter can be never destroyed, nor can be created, but it cannot be stopped, changed, even for a moment. It's a time, you remember the moment? Even a moment you cannot stop the change, even though you don't see the change, but even at this moment my nose is changing. So my hairs are changing. So do you too. Mother went, oh, yes, Swami is in as well, but not me. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be always. <laughs> and all the young people do, oh, yes, Swami is changing that way. <laughs> 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 but uh, I was also just like a black haired man, like you all. If you don't believe it, look at the complete book of yoga. My body changes, my hair changes. Did I have, look at the complete latest book edition that comes. That, Photograph taken when I was uh, 30 or 28 and 30 in between the Florida was taken. Some taken in Florida, some taken in Hong Kong at the way coming. And then later on I put it in the form of book. I look that photograph and look this photograph. If you don't believe it. Here is me. <laughs> the left side of Swami Guru, Guru Maharaj is me. Just pass it on. People who never seen this. Look at that body. And look at this body. <laughs> look at that picture. Just pass it on. Who never seen me. Look at that picture, look at this picture. In a comparison, in weight, in the height. Same nose. <laughs> <laughs> you are wrong, Gopala Krishna. You didn't study, you didn't study the physiology, I think. No, it looks the same. No, it doesn't even look the same. <laughs> the body cells change every seven years, the entire body changes. Do you know? How long you married to Madhala, sir? about 10 years. 10 years. Now how many, she changed at least 7 years, so 10 years. So one and, one and a half times she changed. The same girl, the same girl you married 10 years ago, it's not the same girl you are seeing now, do you know that? Same you two. The same person, what you married is not the same person. Everything's changed in him. Eh? Fatter? <laughs> what? Better. That's not change. But the cells, everything married, the same cell is no more there. The same Gopalishna you married, same the Madarasa you married ten years ago, that's dead and gone. Do you know that? That's not there. Even nose is there, even the hair is not there. Because every seven years everything has changed. Krishna, you know that? 
The Lakshmi you married is not the same Lakshmi now? She looks different. Huh? She does look different. <laughs> <laughs> Only she does look but she also, she does the same thing or he changes it? Different. Different. <laughs> but you think, oh, this same my wife, but it is not your wife. The wife you married is gone, that is gone a long time ago. So the same Vishnu Swami, Vishnu came from India 30 years ago. How many times that, that same Vishnu is dead and gone? How many times? Four times the same Vishnu came from India, which you see in that picture, he is no more there. So the same picture you see in the complete Vishnu book of yoga, that is not here anymore. Though you say, oh, Swami Vishnu's picture, that Swami Vishnu which you saw is God. So the purpose of this talk is because this afternoon I had a silent people came to see me, few people want to see me, some of me. First group of students, Loka, and uh, they are the, the first group of people who that no one knew even yoga in, in Canada. I came to Montreal and then I gave a lecture and they became my first students and they were all English to come and uh, take classes, etc. Now she came with her uh, daughter and granddaughter and uh, God, they were not, daughter was there but not the granddaughter, is there. they were never existed after the She came to see me. So I, uh, others also came. I was observing silence, so I did not talk, I wrote. Then I asked, Yoga, you ever thought that one day you will come with a grey hair like me? No, no, I never thought when I saw you first time. I reminded her, see, I got grey hair. Then she also took her cap, see, I also had grey hair. <laughs> and then she pointed her daughter, Manika, she saw the at that time she was only 18 or 19, something like that. And uh, she, <coughs> she pointed to her daughter also. Now look at, Monica also has got a uh, gray hair. Her daughter also. They got her. They're all. So you never thought that you are going to get old at that time. When it's offered, no, I never thought that I going to get old. We never see, this is the most, most amazing thing in this universe. Yudhishthira, the eldest brother of Arjuna, there are five brothers, the eldest one is Tamagutra of Yudhishthira. He is the embodiment of virtue, Tamagutra. Any virtue you can see, he truthful, almost in fact, he is the embodiment of all virtue. And one day the story goes on. These five brothers, they had to go into the forest incognito for, because they were gambling and they lost. And that, uh, if they lose their gambling, they not only lose their kingdom, they were ruling, but also they had to go 14 years into the forest and they should no one, never recognized by anybody. So all the, the kings or kings and ruling their they went to forest incognito, they would hide their real nature. And when in the forest they were very thirsty, so the youngest brother, Sahadeva, went to bring some water for all the brothers. And as soon as he went and he, he drank for some water and took some water, and he died. Something mysterious in the water. And the second brother, what happened to me first, the last brother was, the next one came, and his brother is dead, but he's thirsty also. But uh, you couldn't do anything, so he took some water, he drank and brought some water to other brothers. He also fell down, died. So each brother who came to bring water and drank, they all died. Dharmamutra, Ero, no. All his four brothers gone, but they never came back. He was astonished. He used to walk toward the way, and the all four brothers dead. And then voice said, you can only drink that water if you answer two questions. Otherwise you also will die. The 
question. One of the question is, what is the most mysterious thing in this universe? If you answer that, you can bring and all your brothers will come back to life. Brothers of you come back, they were very happy. He answered, yeah. We see death everywhere, yet we think, I am not going to. Everyone will die, but not me. They are the most mysterious thing in this universe. And that was the Yama, the Lord of Death itself came in the guise to ask, test Tamutras. He was pleased with the answer, and then he, all the brothers came back to life. So Tamutra said, You know, the death takes place at this very moment. Thousands of people are taking the last breath. When the new, tomorrow when we celebrate New Year, the bell rings at 12 o'clock at midnight, and the even at that moment, people are dying. That never stops that process. Day, night, holiday, good day, bad day, makes no difference. Some people die in the bed, some people die while breathing. While breathing, they, you know, how do they stop, die while breathing? Because they're breathing wrong air. <laughs> the Los Angeles polluted air. <laughs> So they die of that, but breathing that air, they are also dying. And they are enjoying the smoke, they are dying. They are eating hot dogs and hamburgers, suddenly one of the bone men in the, in the truck here, he is choking and dying. Others drowning, drowning and dying, others electrocuted, others hand, others heart attack or they were attracted to me, attacked, they were all attacking you. So that takes place. But we never think of that. Oh, yeah, that's for other person. Oh, other person died by the cancer, this person died by, by the aid, etc. Debrati died by aid, and the rock and died by aid, and all the movie stars are terrified of the most terrified thing for the, for the movie stars in California. You know what? Aid. Now they don't kiss anymore. In Hollywood, <laughs> they're afraid now who is going to do me? Eight, eight. So they stop kissing, <laughs> and not only kissing, hugging also because they don't know he may be just a punch and a bit hole in my body. <laughs> but that takes place. But we think, oh, I can protect myself. I got best doctor, good insurance, I mean, health insurance. Life insurance. There is no health or life, it's only death insurance. You can slow it down, the process of decay, or make it faster by going to champagne party and hot dog party or cold cat party. You can pass enough. <coughs> but it is taking place. Even at this time I'm talking, my body is changing for so your body, and that is a mystery. We never see this change is taking place. We think tomorrow you're going to come, tomorrow I'm going to celebrate my birthday. birthday. Hey, that's right, I forgot all about it. <laughs> <laughs> really, I, 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 was, I was not thinking about that at all, and I said, you know, tomorrow I'm going to celebrate my birthday. Then I realized, my God, really, I'm going to celebrate my birthday. <laughs> then I realized, oh, it's true, tomorrow I'm going to celebrate my birthday. A big cake made? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you must have 61 candles, don't forget this. <laughs> and I'm going to special pranayama. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make another one. I'll have a fish. Taking 
you are losing your life. Just like God is burning oxygen, so also I am burning prana, the life energy itself. So each time you breathe, you are actually losing. So changes. So that is. Then one person asked in that group, Swami, it is true that Swami Shivananda, before he died, he knew he is going to die. Of course, I was not talking, so I was writing. But now I can talk at the same time. I feel better by talking. And that, yes, it is true. You also know when you are dying, when you stop breathing, definitely you know that you are dying. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> but anyhow, that's reality, that's true. But anyhow, he has better, better answer. Okay, I knew that. They all laughed, people who are there. So I just said, yes, it's possible. Not it's possible. So I gave a scientific explanation. A tape recorder. Battery is dying, and where battery is full, you turn it on. If you have recorded on the mona, on the mona, I and I, 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 it will sing there. And then the battery is getting weaker and weaker. On the mona, I and I, on the mona, battery is dead. So also you are using prana. The big prana, the flower is booming, the face is booming. You get here, you pull all the gray hairs and then I put some dye like this or radius. Doesn't matter. And they start walking. I need a, a stick. No stick. You need somebody to. So the prana first goes from the leg. And that shows, mm, I'm getting older. And then, hand is still stronger. Most of my activity I do with my hand, then with my like you know, walking, climbing. I can use my hand. This is the not because old age, all the Good neuropathy, the diabetic conditions, the diabetic I got, the pancreas is not working. Because two accidents, one of the accidents, my liver kidneys and all those was jammed. And um, the second same accident took place in the uh, same area. I hit my same knee, broke the same knee, same patella, and the same then I was lying. So that injury, two eyes injury has destroyed my pancreas and liver, etc. And it became and became very weak. The pancreas became very weak. And then naturally, once the pancreas cells die, it won't rejuvenate. There's a diabetes. So anyhow, it's not because I eat too much sugar, that's not because of that. Anyhow. Also stress and strain due to those psychic phenomena took place. Some six hours, seven years, I had to use certain things. And that drained my energy completely, was devitalized. So anyhow, many other causes created. And the diabetes then brought the neuropathy, that's one of the, it affects the nerves, uh, especially on the leg area. So, this is called neuropathy, there the nerves become slowly, slowly damaged. It doesn't function anymore, no more prana moves down the lower limbs. That's why, so bro broken patella is still there, I mean, the patella which keeps the, the legs completely folded the other way, do you know that? The purpose of the patella? The, the legs nose straightened up. This way I can fold, but that way it stops. What well, stops them? It stops the patella, the small piece of bone there, which keeps that thing. And uh, that was the thing which injured that actor because twice I hit the same. Anyhow, if the patella is not there, your legs will go this way. <laughs> <laughs> 
So anyhow, so the neuropathy, broken patella, broken liver, broken pancreas, and the accidents, which are almost a death practically in Spain. Uh, and that brought this neuropathy. Climbing is very difficult for them. That's the only the strongest day in my arms. I climbed even 10,000 feet and I was still good up. But mostly I had to use my hand to hold the branches or somebody had to. With this level, even climbing this staircase will be very difficult because of that. <laughs> so anyhow, that damaged pancreas or diabetic conditions and broken patella. Very weak, my blood became very weak, means no prana goes to my legs. You want to get up from here, it really takes a little strain. Do you know that sometimes you may not even walk where? I was struggling even to get up from here because no prana goes into the, my blood muscles are quite strong. I do lots of exercise, but to give that strength, to lift that 155 body, pound body, you strain. To climb two steps because there's no prana goes there. So when the death comes, first the prana is withdrawn from the lower limbs. Then the prana, slowly, you don't feel any pain at all there. See? It's like anesthesia. If you're given, there is no. So the first one prana in the death person is lying in dead bed. So the prana is withdrawn from the lower side. And slowly it will climb up and the lower area will become paralyzed, there will be no feeling. And then slowly the lower area, abdominal area, kidneys and stomach all will be paralyzed. Then still there will be prana more on the hand side because that's too far away, upper area. And then you can see the slowly the paralysis, like a paralysis, it sets like anesthesia, there's no more lower feeling at all, the lower body as if it doesn't exist for you. And then finally, though you may be breathing and you feel that there's no feeling of breathing or heartbeat or anything, just mechanically it does a little bit. And then eventually you don't feel the entire body as the prana withdraws, the whole lower area becomes like doesn't exist. There's no pain or anything. You don't feel the existence of your body anymore. As if it is just like you're watching uh, if someone is just or an amputated, doctor amputated your head and it's lying there, you know. The same way you feel it. And you can also see it certain because still some prana is there in the upper area. So you can see the body is lying and but you cannot move your hands and legs and so forth. You can hear the sound, now the senses, all the main senses are in the upper area. And uh, your wife will come and children will come, relatives will come. How are you, Daddy? You hear as if a distant sound. It's no more like a, your son's sound. Someone is talking. You can, some small vibration is there, that's all. And you look at the person, blurred. You can see some of the forms. The very little prana on the eyes. The ear. <coughs> you can smell, you don't smell anything anymore. So if you put some ice cream in the mouth, he won't taste. <coughs> There's no prana. The prana makes all this experience. Like the electricity makes all this. And eventually, it affects the mind itself eventually. The prana is withdrawn from the brain in the astral body. Baby. And that time, the brain becomes flat. Brain waves become flat. There's no more brain waves. That's the time doctors say you are. Then, but what it means, you're moving the whole system into another system. They're called astral body. And this connection is no more there. So physical body is disconnected and no more prana goes. Like electricity is cut off from that wire coming up, that yellow wire or orange wire. And uh, the movie, it won't work. It, the street TV is, so that is the thing which cut off. So no more prana comes. This is called death. Well, do you, the question is, you know this before. Yes, physical this experience, most of the people can feel it. 
but yogis can feel it mentally also long before the death comes. How? So I explained again in writing. Look at an egg incubating under the mother's warmth or the chicken's warmth. After how many days it, it, the chick comes out? 25 days? 26 days? 30 days at the incubation period. So the mother sits and warms the eggs and exactly at 25 or 26 days of the incubation, the chick is alive and its heart beats everything, but still is covered with the shell. That chick has some time, has to work very hard to, to, to open the eggs, to come out. Some of them are very hard. Even some, uh, like in crocodile, etc., in a crocodile. And sometimes the, the others help, uh, the mother helps, uh, others come and open it up, otherwise the mother will die. If it, no, others are not. So many of the chicks can open from within. How do you know this chick that you must open to come out of the shell? So it has got a mystical experience because that inside the egg the experience is different. Now he wants to, the nature prompts to, to think, come on, open it up, get out. And so it breaks and comes out of the shell. It's free from the, from the, shell which was protecting and it, it was the house for since it was it was hatching since the <coughs> it took that egg form the whole egg was his body now he left the shell and came out and came to the fresh air and looking at the shell not looking at the some other animal, some animal, birds and animals, you know what they do to the shell of their babies or the newborn hatched thing, you know what they do? Like, like say, for example, um, the, the biggest bird is uh, in Australia, what do you call it? Ostrich. Ostrich, that's right. Ostrich. And uh, as soon as the baby born, the lions always also follow this ostrich, etc. And the the smell of that and that shell, it will attract the, toward that nest, the jackals and other various types of creditors. So what the mother bird do, you know? They will try to eat the shell so that it will be, so others will not see where they are hiding. That, that if they leave the eggs and go and hide even nearby anywhere, you know, the jackals will, uh-uh, there is someone is hiding somewhere here. So they eat the egg, the shell itself. So anyhow, so when the chicken came out and saw the shell lying empty, hollow, broken and hollow, same day yogi sees before dying, just like the chicken see the time has come, he must come out by chiseling the eggs and then come out of the sh egg shell and then watches and then just move, I don't care about it anymore. So yogis can see the body as a shell. Now his time has come, he must, he must leave the shell like the chick. To birth means, not physical, so this material world, he is going to another dimension. He can see that. So it is a time for him to leave this physical shell which was holding for so many years in his lifetime. So what he do? He just try to break the shell to Sahasrara, to Pranayama. Because then he learned all his life as practice of pranayama. He's taking the energy up and the energy down. So the same thing he does. Though you may not see it, he doesn't act in words. And he mentally, though he may be physically weak, physically he cannot move, but mentally he's still able to bring the energy to the chakras and that energy and then break the shell of the sarasvara and then just like the chick leaves, he used mental energy. By the mental energy he's able to be consciously. Even the lying position, sitting position, some yogis sit and meditate and live, some people lie in lying position they live. But it doesn't matter, the energy can easily be moved upward, consciously. 
That's all the secret of the yogi. See that all the time they do years and years. Now even the lying position, sick position, body is unhealthy, and that's, that makes no difference. But they can easily take up consciously into so withdrawing the prana automatically by the by the lack of prana. Here the yogi is concentrated all the prana in the sushumna central canal. Other place there's no, but the still prana is the central canal. As long as the time he can easily consciously move up the energy through the sahasrara and break the sahasrara and move up. This is the way of why yogis see the death is coming, means the prana is no more, much enough for other activities, but he's got enough prana in the sushumna to hold on for all the emergency purpose, for his leaving the body consciously by repeating God's name or mentally thinking of the God's name, they break the shell and leave the body as a shell and then moves out. And he can watch and see his physical shell is lying there. Like in people, even under chlorof chloroform anesthesia or many other ways, they can see their body is moved off. But here the body is moved off completely because the astral cord is cut off. So yogis can see before they die that death is coming. So they prepare for that consciously, not just waiting the death to snatch away. They do. Like the chick is helping himself to come out of the out of the air consciously. That was the uh, explanation about that. Yogis can see that they're approaching and how they leave their body. So the technique you are learning, asana, pranayama, japa, meditation, all this will help you at the last time of your last birth, uh, the death time, consciously depending upon your evolution and your power, your strength you created, and some will have full consciously they can leave, some only partially conscious, some will be just leaving while talking, they fall off, some people just sleep, they don't even know they're dead, they die during the sleep, you know, some people die during sleep. And then suddenly they wake up. They are quite confused in the being because they can't see the same body which they used to work with. They see new environments, new conditions. In the being they are confused. So they are suppose they died here in the usual bed like this. So then, oh my God, I have to go downstairs. The only way to go is the Staircase. But they've got no body. The body is overing, the astral body is overing. This floor is not barrier. He can directly just think that he goes, his astral body will go through the floor like x ray. He wants to get out, he doesn't have to go through that, through the door. He can just think and this astral body will penetrate as soon as, soon as you think. It materializes. You push through the, go to the wall. But the old habit you created that you had to go through the staircase and to get out through the door, you open the door. You do those. You can directly get out, mainly thinking. But the habit will not make you to do that. You just walk, walk to the staircase and then just go and open the door and then get out. And then after several days or hours, you learn. Oh, oh that's not what necessary. I can go straight through this. I don't have to go through this. They have to learn this. Unless you are a great advanced yogi, he knows even after death, he knows I can just go mentally anywhere I want, even to any plane I can watch. So they're called advanced. So they are they're prepared by that. Even yogi to certain extent, you're all prepared for even after death how to easily move on. This will become naturally to you because you are practicing this. People who just only think of their body, thinking their body is only everything, eating, drinking, smoking and the, all this only important thing. And they die, though they can be President Reagan or President Bush, congressman or with millionaire, billionaire, uh, like a, what do you call, Onassis or a, uh, uh, huh? Mr. Hughes. Who? Mr. Hughes came in the What is it? You, Mr. Hughes. Hughes. Hmm? Howard. Howard. Yes, that's right. Because they think that everything is only external thing. Howard Hughes, you know, he wants to have a, a, a napkin uh, to take from the, from the 
tissue, he will tell, uh, ask the nurse, create 10 tissue first out, the 11th tissue you take it out. Know why? Because there may be germs in the, so in the 10th one, so he will take out. But now he can take that. And he touches soap to wash the hand. It must be fresh and new. And then he'll take another soap and wash that soap. And <laughs> <laughs> not making a joke. He was terrified of germs. And with that terrifi terrified nature, he dies. In the astral world also he has the same feeling. Anything he'll think he'll be terrified. Yet lost thought is very powerful. And you cannot change the thought. Same thing here also. All your habits and creates all just what you did in the past life, the lost thought, made you a woman or a man. What made you to be a woman? What made my mother to be a woman and Gopal is a man? Was God did. God knows all the truth, you know. Mother should be a girl and the Gopal should be a man so they can marry. God prepared all these things. How? Because Mother also thought, uh, I want some children. I want to enjoy the babies in my hand and then look at the babies and feed the babies. And I want to feel the babies in my womb. So that may be the last thought. If that is so, she gets a woman's body. And Gopal uh, said, I must have a wife and a beautiful wife, a good wife and a spiritual wife. And, uh, Naturally, he must be a man, then I must be a man. Then, so he is born as a man. So it is your thought that makes you into a man or a woman. You know, it's nobody else. Not God creates all these things. And some people do not know what they want, male or female. They are confused. So at the time of birth, they don't know what they are. <laughs> they call, we call it in Sanskrit, Navam Sagar. They are neither male nor female. You know, they are pale gender. Do you know that? I don't think so. You don't know. In our... Uh, system, we not only male and female, there are neutral genders. Some people neither male nor female. They are neutral. Do you know that? You never heard of that. It's neutral genders. Some people are born neutral. Though they may have a piece of a male body, but their action will be like a female. And someone look like a female, but their action is like male. They are neutral. They don't know which, which gender they belong to. Do not, don't, do not blame them. At least they are confused at the time of birth because of a thought and now you don't, oh yeah, he is homosexual, he is lesbian, this is all very bad. You may say it is very bad. From their point of view, they don't see it is bad or it is as natural as you feel as a male, as you feel as a female. This is what Western psychologists don't understand that, you know. And then this can be accelerated, this process of neutral gender. A male body can act as a female body by taking artificial hormones. It changes like a, a still best methyl, a very powerful artificial female hormone is injected to animals. Still methyl, very powerful, and uh, and fat in the animal. And you eat that animal's flesh, and you will get little dose of that still methyl to the animal flesh every day. And though you are a male, you feel female. You are female. You start growing breast. Actually, uh, uh, there are stories like that. You know, men growing uh, growing breast. All this happens because the hormone changes, the mind, the thought changes, mind changes. In the, in the interaction between the physical and the astral, it takes place. Mental attitude changes. Um, the Europeans now do not want to import American meat. And uh, Reagan immediately retorted, no, no, no. Why the Europeans do not want to bring American meat? Because they said American, American meat contains lots of hormones and uh, we don't want that, that's very dangerous. So, in, and uh, President Reagan and others said, no, that's not true. That we are eating, why can't you eat? <laughs> and so we are going to retaliate. The trade war starts, it started already. So, um, uh, Europeans don't know about American the kind of animal today. It is still better, it will prove by scientifically, yes, these hormones do affect your mental thinking, changing. There are so many uh, gays and the lesbians, etc. They are given so much of this animal contaminated by this female hormone. Their mental mind changes, the body changes. So they are actors and gays and so forth. And then you blame, oh, they are bad. They are not bad or good. Either they, neither they have been educated, nor even they don't have to take. Their parents take a lot of meat, of that type of steel bathroom meat, 
and the mother who conceived the baby and having eaten a lot of stuff that was the mother is female and slowly slowly the male baby will be changed into female and the mental the body is a male when he is born he thinks like a female you see because that man the hormones exist so that the neutral gender exists this described clearly in our, our in the west in our north about neutral genders the neither male nor female in between that there is hovering in between and it's a very horrible life for these people do you know that how much they suffer unbelievable suffering because they don't know which side they have to move because the world is divided mainly between these two genders and suddenly they became in the center and uh, there's not many people they can move they can talk they can express they can just uh, just be social with them because there's everyone is only either one side or this side or that side and they are in between and they can't find their own genders very 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 few are left so it is a very horrible mental emotional life for these people so the at the time of death you can change your hormones or the body condition if you think that of a woman at the time of death you want and then you will be born as a woman if you think of a man then you will be born as a man if you think of a dog your pet dog no doubt you are going to be a dog <laughs> you are laughing is it It's not a laughing matter. It's true. <coughs> the last year, the great movie star. Previous life, he was a, a movie star, human movie star, and then he must have thinking of a dog and pet dog and so forth, and he died, and then he became a lassie. <laughs> and most of the movie stars, when they think they are hug and kiss and they keep the dog in their bed and they think of morning like a baby day. bring up at the last moment that thought will be only just like a mother thinks of the baby they think of their dog baby and they are natural they can't escape but this is not a permanent state again you must understand that this is not a permanent state it's only a temporary state that body and then slowly the body will dissolve upon the powerful thought slowly to the uh, vanishes from the subconscious state or become very vague like a tape recorder that loses its power become very big. then they slowly lose that consciousness they call death the experience of a dog body they lose that experience and then they born as a human body again so there is no such thing as a permanently you are thrown into any any place your thought will not stay in any one state all the time even the most painful thought the experience of the death of the baby mother loved the baby very much and the baby died in her arms now that painful experience will she won't eat she won't drink anything because the painful condition created by the death of her baby but after 10 12 years you ask how is your what type of your baby oh baby died in my arm but she didn't have no emotional feeling she will very happy maybe it will just generate some emotion for a second And that she it goes away it doesn't last long so pain pressure any thought it doesn't stay permanently it's not like it will change so that's what what we are trying to change this type of emotional thought you are attached to this body i am the body i am the body i am mr america i am mr america i am mr and mr and mr europe and mrs europe etc this idea is generated and you are increasing this idea and we are just decreasing this idea i am not this body i am not this mind i have the immortal soul at the last moment if you really feel i am brahmasmi or i am krishna i will repeat unnam bhagavad was deva the picture of the krishna will come and then you must be in that superconscious state you will not be born again this call immortality at least in the physical body in the physical world you don't have to be born you may be born in the higher planes and you don't come back from there onward the evolution is on the final evolution comes up you move on from one plane to another plane so krama mukti step by step mukti and the very few jnanis like sugadev and the instant mukti that takes place they call instant because they are constantly identifying that self they are living constantly on the self not the body no i just like you are identifying with the body you are aware of this body all the time they are aware of not the body body is like a shell for them and they are identifying with sachidananda atman 
and when they shut off its body, the shell, immediately they drop merges with the ocean, but instant mukti. But vast majority of the people cannot go into that state of instant mukti. They have to go because still they have little bit of salty qualities, so, like, residues, etc. But they are liberated because the diseases are conquered. They don't want to just anymore the physical body, not any disease for relationship between the, like a male and female relationship. They want and babies they want. The disease no more exists in that. They have created this state to devotion, like Mirabai, etc. And they much, not immediately to the high, high supreme being, they go to different planes. First heaven, second heaven, then they go to second experience, that second heaven. Then they experience third heaven, then fourth heaven. Thousands and thousands of years. And then they move on. Finally, the whole world will just merge with the supreme. They also merge. Final mukti comes up. They don't have to reborn again, they won't come back. So they don't even come back when they go into another place. But for us, if we are not have each, each reach this stage, and uh, even one desire exists it's like a seed, you will have a body. To enjoy that desire, you have the body. Otherwise, you can't. So I, mu I, need, I must have some kind of desire to start a yoga camp. <laughs> and so. Then I had this desire, I must see, uh, who is that, Sita? Oh, I must see that. Of course, her name was not Sita in the last life, but uh, she was a good disciple. I want to see Sita. Well, that desire, with that desire I die. Oh, my good desire. That was sufficient. The bring the everything, like a one small tree contains thousands of branches will come out of it. When it come out of the shoe, of the, of the this thing. At first shoot there's only one. Then slowly grows up and then two branches, three branches, ten branches, hundred branches, thousand branches. So that one desire of just seeing Sida as my first best disciple, that's sufficient. I need a body. From that onwards, desire will multiply. And I want to see Sida, then I want to see Sida have grandchildren and I want to see the grandchildren, grandchildren, and I want to just see what they can do. This way you go on increase the desire. That's why even one desire will amplify an infinite number of desires. Though you cut off most of the desires in the last life, but leave one desire, that is sufficient. <laughs> Again, you grow a huge forest out of it. So be careful. Don't grow even one tree, one plant. Don't keep one desire. Why are you going to do that? It's not possible. Easy. That's why I always surrender, oh Lord. Whatever I do, whatever I think, whatever I desire, I offer as my flower to you. Hey, you did a good job. <laughs> Very simple. But that's all God wants. Nothing can save you from this desire until you get to the feet of the Supreme. Constantly repeat His name, offer every action, good or bad, doesn't matter what it is. If you have bad action, just all forgive him. Just like good action you can give also. So bad also. So God, I didn't want to do all this. You made me to do. I give to you as you take it. You can do that. If you have true love, you can offer even the bad thing you can give to him. He will accept it. Just like you offer flower. So conclusion. Do not keep any desires. You are one desire. You bring a whole forest of desires. And if there is a desire, only one desire, keep it. Repeat the mantra. Just pray to God. Let me repeat your name at the last moment when I take my last breath. Last breath, pranayama. Or You will never come back. You will never come back. You don't have to get back into the three dimensional world of birth and death and disease, sickness, war, calamity, tornado. You don't have to come back to the emotion. These emotions, the love, affection, it's all just illusion. It's an illusion. But you want again, they were born as a child and then mummy slap and then babies, my mother and father slap and then afterwards and then uh, girls slap and then. Uh, this goes on, then you enter into another womb, and again you stay in the nine months in the other womb, and then again you are born again. 
this goes on eternally. You want to, you don't want to get out of this. You won't get out of this. So repeat God's name. Now you got only one more day for this year. It will never come back. Do you understand that? This is 1988. What's the time? 10, 16. So it is time for? Time for? Sleep, isn't it? Don't go to sleep. We got, it will never come back this day. <laughs> Even sleeping, your time is, your body is changing, your mind is changing, your lifespan is just burning down. So, sleepless. And repeat God's name more. And do more pranayama, not more breathing. <laughs> breathing means you are burning down your prana. Each time you take a breath, you are losing it. But when you do pranayama, you increase the lifespan, the prana is more conserved. In each chakra will act as a battery to hold this extra prana. And then at the last moment, the time comes when there's no more prana in other portions, God is stored all the batteries are fully charged. Hey, you got extra battery waiting. All the six batteries are fully charged. <laughs> other people are all batteries are some energy is gone to the tongue, some energy is gone to the ear, some energy is gone to uh, various other areas, the legs and forth. And this you conserve all these things and you are storing it for emergency like a storehouse. Now you can use it that energy and think the way you want it. Not the nature will make you think automatically, no more automatic conscious life. That is the conclusion of this, this talk. <coughs> so, it is time to, to go to <laughs> Don't go to sleep. Even if you are going to sleep, because tiresome body needs it, brain needs it, just tell God, I repeat your mantra, even when I am sleeping, make me to repeat your name. Just tell me. Subconsciously, automatically, subliminally, you will be repeating the mantra. If you create a habit like that, yes, even when you are sleeping, you will be repeating the mantra. And uh, suddenly, if there is an accident comes, the word first time you repeat is your mantra. Means of calling doctor, 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 come and help me, I need help. You say, oh, namo narayanaya. Namo <laughs> narayanaya. <laughs> Yes, yeah, automatically you do. Ram, as Mahatma Gandhi was shot. What did he say? Ram. Ram. That's the last word. Yes, he was repeating that mantra all his life. And he is not merely repeating, it's part of his life, day and night. And so the shot came, Ram. Then you remember Pope was, the present Pope was shot. You know what did he say? No? What what said after he get shot? Why me? 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 Well, why not? <laughs> it's very cruel that question, is it not? Well, but he said, I am very holy man, so why should they shoot me? That is his idea about holy. <laughs> That's ego. <laughs> That's why he has it. Same thing. Ronald, uh, Ronald Reagan was shot. You know, he said afterwards, "Oh, I forgot to duck." <laughs> and they shot him. I should have ducked. Well, he became Ronald the Duck. <laughs> To repeat the Ram, the God's name, in the last moment is not possible. Any mantra is, unless you repeat constantly and make yourself conscious to tell day, night. So repeat more as much as possible, even before you go to bed. Repeat ten minutes more there, repeat the ten minutes more mantra. Your sexual energy will trans into sublimate automatically. The mantra will do everything for you. God's name will do anything. There's no such a powerful energy like God's name. 
Now, if you just go and try to rag in and bush, they are say, hey, push him out. <laughs> they don't understand this the power of the name, power of God. They only know the power of presidents and congressmen, senators, and how many votes I can get. It. And um, what type of a horse they are going to ride, and uh, where they are going to buy their new house, and where they are going to retire. That's all. Even the last moment, still, Reagan is thinking now they are already bought the new house in California. He's going to retire there with his wife, and he's got a farm and horses, etc. And uh, that's all. The rest of his life, he's got the pension, but he will be doing the same. Powerful thinking. I was ex-president. Uh, I'm Ronald Reagan, and I got my wife and my children and my grandchildren coming up and so forth. And I celebrate this Christmas with more turkey and then next Christmas I invite that friend and bring more turkeys and the, the sun will come for that and my, that's all that till the last moment of their last life they'll be thinking only this that thinking is like last that's not much better and then the lying in the deathbed with all the intravenous injections and doctors poking all the things and uh, the and ah he died so what there is no death. It's the idea, the, the fear of death is coming because of this. I am thinking that this is real. That's all. Yogis are not afraid. I am not talking this merely any, an intellectual experience. Again, egoistically I can't say that. But anyhow, for me, whether I am living or dying has got no meaning to me. Death has got no fear to me, literally. If I die, I'm very happy also. I don't just say, sorry, Pasma Madhavanji anymore. I don't like to pay the taxes and insurance and the light like candles and the, uh, bring money for support of Swami Mahadevanji. <laughs> and uh, so at least we can spend the millions of dollars. Uh, <laughs> I'm quite happy about it. And I don't fight a uh, uh, the suit for the this uh, can, uh, London, London suit, and buy another property in Los Angeles, and the property in London, so many property there, and the property in Toronto they want to buy. I don't have to worry about they bring all the documents and all the things, sign here, so sign that paper. <laughs> or every day they bring a ten uh, uh, bad paper, please, from me, this signature, here you sign it. What for? You sign it. <laughs> And I don't know the time now, I can read it clearly. Okay, I wear the time for me all the Okay, what is this? Oh, this is a new bank they are opening up. And whose name? Oh, it doesn't matter, you just signed that. <laughs> <laughs> so Padmanandi just signed, oh, got my signature, and opened an account in his name, and oh, he's enjoying his life. <laughs> Who cares about it? Because I don't want anything. The desire for owning will disappear. In fact, I don't have anything. This I've not just learned in this life. The past lives also, otherwise you won't get that desireless state where you don't want anything. You are just happy just to be yourself. Or at the feet of God all the time. Or even at your feet when I come here, I just come in to serve you all. There's nothing else. I get quite happy, just like I'm in a meditation room. I only just get the same meditation I feel when I see you all. Same God is there. Not in one form, so many forms, so many different faces. In the one phase I see, I see different, God takes away his faces. This is not yes, you can, that experience, the fearlessness, that the fear of death which you are horrified, it has got no meaning to me. It's literally. Just like if you are not afraid to go to sleep, are you? Are you afraid to go to sleep? Not the hero is here where? <laughs> Sleep in your room, in a nice bed, air conditioned room or heated room. You are not afraid. You are happy to do that. But that's enough to do, you know that? What guarantee is that you will come wake up tomorrow? Even someone says, hey, you are not going to wake up, so don't go to sleep. Forget it. <laughs> I am going to sleep. But you wake up tomorrow. Same thing. For you, why the fear of death is? You think you will not come back again. Death is going to end everything. It's not possible. Just a like sleep is not going to end anything. You get up again, continue where you left. Same thing. Death is not going to end anything. If that is so, very simple. You can just put one hydrogen bombs and destroy the globe, so you won't come back. 
So you'll have permanent holidays, isn't it? <laughs> so wonderful it is. I'll be so happy. If that's the easiest way, I'll destroy this world and then God, I can give rest to the God. Hey God, you go and take rest. We destroy the world. You don't have to worry about creating any more souls. Even the earth was destroyed, that seed is still there. It says there, you cannot burn by any hydrogen or atom bomb. Even the earth is not there, you will be drawn to some distant planet where that seed can be grown, that the seed can be fertilized properly and be brought into action. So you cannot stop your desires in materializing. That's a law. No power exists except when you realize God, all the desires will vanish. Desires is the illusion of the mind created by Maya. So practice yoga not just for merely for pressure's sake or rejoicing's sake. You must know the purpose behind it. The purpose is to change your thought pattern into a positive state and eventually reach that immortal state. And then you don't have to come back here. You can get some experience in other planes, as the Kunar Airlines advertises. Getting there is the half the fun. <laughs> you know that, that I don't still they, they, they use this uh, advertising slogan. Kunar Airlines, the very big shipping airlines. Suppose you are flying from here to London, just six hours, or if you are going to Concord, three hours. You just got up, you drank the tea, and by that time you are already, when you get up, you are in London Airport, Heathrow. They don't say, come on, fasten your seat, but you are going to land. Before you fasten your belt, you are already landed. The Kunad Airlines said, why do you just want to travel like that to London or Europe? Take our airline. Getting there is half the fun because you have to get in the luxury ship and they have a nice birth and TV and dance, music goes on, you can reach there also. While reaching there also you can enjoy it. Not only when you are in London you can enjoy, you can on the way also you can enjoy. It. That's it. So getting there is half the fun, that's one of their we are attracting passengers, ship passengers. So we use the same slogan. Maybe Kunar Dain has taken from us. <laughs> Getting there is the half the fun. Get the supreme state. Though you lose some of the pressures of this world, many beautiful pressures there, the astral world. Astral pressure is unbelievable. And the heaven is heaven fast too. This is to attract the people who want happiness. They don't want just want to reach there. They want to also, well, if you want that also. But you get out of this world as soon as possible. Don't try to wish to come back to this planet. That's all. So think of God anyway. Whether you like it or not, you will be born. If you are not reach the immortal state, no way you can escape coming back. Om Namo Narayanaya 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 Om Namo Narayanaya